At this bill, we now read a second time. I call the member for Heffron. Mr. Acting Speaker, I rise to support the coal seam gas prohibitions in the water catchment areas bill 2013. And I do for this reason, uh, and that is that the purpose of the bill is evidence based. This is it. And not only is it evidence based, it will play a very if enacted, will play a very significant uh, and important uh, process in, in the years ahead as New South Wales faces one of its greatest economic crises relating to gas prices. And I will explain that in a moment. Good point. The, the Minister for Energy uh, said to the House in response to this bill, in opposition to, 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 to this bill, mm -hmm. that the government has a legislative framework and it is the toughest in Australia and it is designed to, to, okay. to enable coal seam, gas and, and, and the environment to be protected or words to that effect. Now the fact of the matter is, Mr Acting Speaker, is that the legislative framework that the government enacted was a political response, not a scientifically based response. It was a political response to overwhelming community concern right throughout the state. Right throughout, right, you've got drags screaming into it. Right throughout the state, you had your former energy minister saying you can't leave coal seam gas in the ground in response to my almost all overwhelming concern. And it was a political response. It wasn't a scientific-based response. And so, consequently. The position that the state finds itself in in coal seam gas is trying to deal with a fundamental policy failure that commenced under the former government. Now, we are the first to concede that the conduct of the Labor government in dealing with coal seam gas issues was, was one that was wrong, that should not have been supported. Right. When they threw the Labor Party out of office, right. and what was the Labor Party's response? What was one of the first things that the That's Labor Party right. did? Right. 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 And, and I, haven't seen, I haven't seen the former Minister for Energy stand up in this House when the Premier overruled him and say, I was wrong when I said Once. you can't leave coal seam gas Once. on the ground in response to that. Now, this is a very difficult and very serious issue. A very difficult and very serious issue. Because what's going to happen in this state in a very short period of time is that gas prices are going to quadruple. They're going to quadruple. And there is a reason for that. And it is not that New South Wales is running out of gas, as the vested interests say. It is because what is going to happen in this state and what's going to happen to the eastern gas market in Queensland and New South Wales and Victoria and South Australia it is that the Gladstone ex liquid export facility is going to come online and New South Wales, our, uh, our customers, or our residents are going to be competing with the rest of the world in terms of gas prices. We're going to be competing with the rest of the world in terms of gas prices. Now, currently, currently, we are now the fourth largest country in the world in terms of in the terms of exporting of gas. Fourth largest. We've gone in, in a period of, of about three or four years from the sixth to the fourth largest. It currently it currently involves 20 percent. 20% but being in exports. Now I can, I can tell you that what's going to happen is that that figure is going to go up to projected to over 30% virtually immediately that the Gladstone facility comes online. And what's going to happen is that there is going to be a crisis because when the gas prices go up, that's not only going to, that's not only going to implement upon those industries and manufacturing industries that are dependent upon the supply of gas, it's also going to impact upon the, uh, upon the electricity generators who utilise who utilise gas for the generation of uh, uh, gas for the generation of electricity, and it's going to infect the entire New South Wales economy, all the way down to the pensioners that are going to be paying for huge gas bills. 
And what's going to, and what's going to happen is we order. can't stop that at all. It relates to the eastern gas market. And, and of course, what, what's going to happen is that the vested interests, the gas and coal mining industry, are going to demand release of coal seam gas as, as, as an effort to, talk, to reduce prices. Now, one of the problems with that, one of the problems with that, and I know that's probably the advice coming out of, out of, the, out, out of, out of the Department of Energy is, um, is that because Australia is only responsible for about 8% of, of gas supplies in the world, there's no amount of coal seam gas under the entire eastern seaboard of Australia that is going to impact upon world prices. People are going to be paying world prices. But the response, I can, you can see it coming. You can see it coming from, from whoever the government of the day is. Because when people start screaming about the gas prices and the electricity prices they're paying, the government's going to respond in a knee-jerk reaction, just like governments seem to do to the popular press, and they're going to say, well, the solution is allow more policy and gas mining. And there's going to be no constraint, and there's going to be no environmental consideration. So, so, so the purpose of this bill is to ensure that when those pressures come, that the water supplies in the Sydney catchment are protected come what may. If you think that the planning system of this state under the current arrangement or the Planning and Assessment Commission is somehow going to protect the environment of this state, you are kidding. They may well have refused some coal seam gas mines, but I can tell you the Planning and Assessment Commission has approved 94% of every application coming through it. Even a previous like shopping centre development, where I have personally told the Minister that I suspect quite dishonest conduct in the processing of the application, not involving the current government. And even then, the Planning and Assessment Commission ticks off development applications. So if you think they're going to defend, they're going to protect the community, the farmlands and the water supplies and the aquifers, from, 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 from coal seam gas miners, you are kidding. Now, the reality of the situation is, as far as this bill is concerned, when I talk about being evidence-based, um, and I just want to say this in terms of the opposition's position and talk about being evidence-based. The chief scientist of New South Wales, to this day, cannot tick off coal seam gas mining. To this day. Now we had a briefing last year from, from the chief scientist in terms of her, in terms of her work uh, and ultimately the chief scientist said this about coal seam gas. For a dry continent such as Australia, more knowledge will be necessary. Further research is required to build our understanding of hydraulic connectivity between groundwater bodies and also between shallow aquifers and connected surface water bodies. Further research is also required on cumulative impacts on groundwater and connected surface water where there are num numerous wells and clays and where there are other industries also drawing on the water such as agriculture or changing the geological structures such as long wall mining. Now that is the view of the chief scientist who cannot tick off the process. So you can have whatever re regulatory regime you like, political or otherwise, it is no solution. But there is one solution being offered by the opposition. Now you might cynically suggest that it's somehow designed to play to people's prejudices or to get a political advantage or create a wedge. I'm putting to this House that it is actually a process to know what's coming in the next few years to provide some measure of protection. Now I just want to indicate this to the House about the Sydney, uh, the, the Sydney catchment special areas. They were established for the purpose of excluding industrial and development activity in the vicinity of potable water sources to prevent the contamination of the water supply, particularly by microorganisms. Section 20... I might have an extension of time, Mr Acting Speaker. Uh, the member who said an extension of time is the... Uh, all of that, can you say aye? Aye. No. The ayes have it, the ayes have it. Member for Heffron. Section 22 of the water, the Sydney Water Catchment Management Regulations 2013 provides that a person must not enter, <coughs> fish, swim, camp or light a fire on any Schedule 1 special area. The maximum penalty for breaching that regulation is $22,000 in the case of an individual, $44,000 
in the case of the corporation. So you can't go fishing, you can't go swimming, you can't go camping, you can't, you can't light a billy, but you can engage in coal seam gas mining. I mean, that is the, the ridiculous... Uh, that is a ridiculous provision that we are, we are currently in. The City Catchment Authority is responsible for the management of Sydney Catchment, the Nepean and Metropolitan Special Areas, are both Schedule 1 Special Areas, while the Warragamba Dam is surrounded by a Schedule 1 Special Area close to the water. Order. And, and a more Order. extensive Order. Order. The member for Heffron, uh, in, it being 11.09am in accordance with...